So in PowerShape, we're going to be using point cloud data captured from the, the arm. We'll convert those into triangles. I'm going to convert the triangles into surfaces, and the surfaces into solids, and then the whole thing will turn up into an assembly. So you can see we're using the full range of entities that PowerShape supports. Okay, so let me flip over to the software. So this is PowerShape, and you can see here I've got the basic design, the basic assembly in place. Let me just turn the assembly off and zoom in on the point cloud. Okay, so this is actually a cloud of points. And if I zoom in, you can just about make out the lines that the laser captured. And like I say, you tend to go over this type of data uh, the same area multiple times. So I've got to process the point cloud data and I'm going to fit a mesh of triangles to the point cloud. So we basically fill the gaps between the points with triangle data and I can enter some parameters to do with the step over and the hole fill which affect the quality of the resulting triangle model. Okay, so that's the triangle model that PowerShape has given me. Now, I could do some, uh, some work on this triangle model, but in fact what I'm going to do first of all is to divide this into the two major areas. So I need to split the hub from the blade, and I can do that using this limiting tool. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in on this dividing area and draw a polygon, I'm just sketching a polygon which will divide the two areas. Okay, so I'm separating the blade from the hub. As soon as the polygon is closed, the operation is complete. Now it looks as if nothing has happened, but if I just change the material of the blade, you'll see now that we have two completely separate uh, triangle entities. Okay, so if we start working on the blade, now obviously the quality of this data is not perfect. You can see some of the lines, and this is to do with when we capture points from the same area, you end up getting slightly different Z heights. So every time the laser passes over the same area, you get a slightly different reading, and this can affect the, result, the resulting triangle model. Now I have a set of tools in PowerShape that would let me clean this data up. I could fill the holes, I could smooth the triangles to give me a perfect blend. And in this case, I've no need to do that because I can simply select triangle data and ask PowerShape to fit the smoothest possible surface it can through that data. Okay, and this is the resulting surface. And we can get a readout showing us the fit of the surface to the triangles if we wish to. Okay, so that is currently a surface. Now the first thing I'll do with that surface is convert it into a parasolid. So this is now, as Vineet mentioned, this is a, an infinitely thin parasolid model. So the first thing I'll do with that is to give it a thickness, and the thickness of my blade is two millimeters. Okay, so now when I zoom in on this edge, you can see we have thickness. Okay, let me just hide the blade, or hide the, uh, the smooth surface for one moment, and again, look at the blade profile. So the next thing we have to do is to capture the outer edge shape of the blade that we're constructing. So I can now use PowerShape's geometry construction tools so we can construct lines, arcs and curves, and I can simply touch on the edge of the triangle data, and in this case, construct curves. And you'll notice that PowerShape has a very powerful, intelligent cursor. So the cursor is continually giving me feedback about tangency and point information. Okay, and I can confirm the radii to construct good quality geometry around the edge of the blade. Okay, now I have the finished uh, profile um, stored on a level, so let me turn that on. I'm going to use that profile to construct a, a surface, which is just a simple extrusion. Let me get my, my smooth solid back, and then I can use that extrusion to limit the parasolid. The triangles for the blade are no longer needed, so they can be removed. Now currently, you can see that this shape has a, a sharp edge. I want that to have a nice, smooth profile. So I can use a rib fillet construction, where we pick the edge and power shape and create the smoothest and the largest radius it can all the way around the blade geometry, removing that sharp edge very simply. 